Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss Boris Johnson's latest potential threats to fail to implement the treaty that he claimed credit for and won a gen general election campaigning for and how he has told an easily refutable lie in order to justify it. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So another quick reminder that I'm going to be appearing elsewhere later today on Grassroots for Europe's uh, podcast tonight. Details in the description below again. So yes, another video on the Northern Ireland Protocol. This may well be a very regular thing. Brexit is, of course, very damaging to all parts of the UK and devastating to those personally knackered by it. But Northern Ireland was always going to be by far the most impacted. Indeed, the very reason for the protocol is because for Northern Ireland, unlike the rest of the UK, it simply wasn't possible to just leave the EU and work out the finer details later. And as if Brexit wasn't causing enough long anticipated political friction in Northern Ireland right now, we're coming up to the centenary of partition in two weeks. Under the current circumstances, this could well be a touchy time. It's a reminder that borders change. <laughs> you know, they'll be thinking, oh, oh, look at what's happened in the last hundred years. Oh, imagine what it's going to look like in another hundred. What it's probably going to look like in another hundred is not how certain residents in Northern Ireland will wish it to look. You know, it's a reminder that countries change, nationality changes, and with unionists already under pressure from the consequences of Brexit, I just hope those tensions don't further spill over. But Boris Johnson has recently been talking rubbish about the protocol again. So I saw a report on the BBC website, which is uh, a precursor to a programme they're doing on the centenary, which has a number of people contributing from Britain, Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland in which Boris Johnson is apparently quoted as saying a number of things, but the most obvious lie, and one that the BBC did not highlight, naturally, was that he said that the EU withdrawal agreement specifically mentions Northern Ireland's integral place in the UK's internal market. Now, there's a little bit of a fib there, Prime Minister. See, let's take a little look at the section he's talking about. This is what it says, and I quote, Nothing in this protocol prevents the United Kingdom from ensuring unfettered market access for goods moving from Northern Ireland to the rest of the United Kingdom's internal market. From Northern Ireland to the rest of the UK. Nothing at all in there about from the rest of the UK to Northern Ireland. Because the unfettered access that Tories like Johnson keep talking about is purely one way and they know it. Of course there's no issue with goods moving from Northern Ireland to Britain because that is entirely the UK government's issue. EU got no concern about that. They don't care about that. The ones that can read can see that this is an obvious lie. Now, OK, I'm not sure about the likes of Ian Duncan Smith and David Davis. It's possible they're genuinely ignorant. But this is a lie that keeps being told. And when the media fail to point out the lie, it means that people believe it as a truth. See, most people won't check the facts for themselves, even though this one's a really easy one to check. You just have to Google Northern Ireland Protocol full text or withdrawal agreement full text, whatever you want. You know, um, and actually you can criticise people for that, but we can't spend all our lives fact checking every little thing we hear. You know, people should be able to expect the media to present facts at least. You know, there are millions of people in the UK who aren't arseholes or even stupid. They just believe that although the media will sometimes spin a story, they get that it can be biased, that they won't actually publish outright lies, even by proxy. And especially the BBC, which isn't owned by billionaires. Except, of course, it is now. So Boris Johnson has once again, for his domestic audience, threatened to invoke Article 16, he says, to suspend the protocol. Again, the way the BBC reported on this was a lie. They said, and again I quote from the article, Mr Johnson said that if he concluded the Irish Sea trade checks are not working in the interests of the UK, he would invoke Article 16, which allows either London or Brussels to temporarily suspend the protocol. 
No, it doesn't. It doesn't do that at all. There are three parts to Article 16. The first part stipulates that whatever measures are going to be taken must be those which least disturb the function of the protocol. So there's no suspension in the protocol in that paragraph. Quite the reverse, it's basically saying you've actually got to make sure you're still following the protocol here. The action has got to be in compliance with it. The second paragraph talks about imbalances being created. But there's no imbalance being created. What we're seeing is the expected impact of the protocol. Not a new scenario that has created a temporary issue. It's a new scenario in that these checks weren't taking place a few months ago. But that's because we didn't have Brexit a few months ago. It was not unforeseen. The third aspect draws attention to Annex 7, which stipulates that Article 16 may not be unilaterally invoked at all that a common solution must be found. If there's an issue, your first port of call, it says, is you go to the other side and say, like, we've got an issue here, we need to sit down and talk about it. And where measures are taken under the article, they're not permitted to begin for at least a month after notifying the Joint Committee and are subject to regular reviews. Nothing in the protocol that allows for a government to just decide that it doesn't like its purchase and is going to suspend it. And that's not just my untrained reading of the protocol. Every independent legal expert has made it clear the UK cannot invoke Article 16 just because it doesn't like the consequences of the protocol, which they signed up to. In fact, more than signed up to. It's not like the EU said, here, we've got an idea. What about this? Oh, yeah, we'll do that. No, no, no. Boris Johnson claimed that this was his idea. You know, just like they said it would have been wrong for the EU to have done so earlier this year over the vaccine embarrassment. Legal commentators are quite clear, can't do it. And this would be full suspension, not what the EU were talking about, full suspension of the protocol, for which there is no provision in the treaty at all. So the BBC weren't just passing on Johnson's lies without informing the readers or viewers of the truth. They were adding their own lies in as well. But what this means is that a large number of people in the UK who will believe that Johnson is within his rights to suspend the protocol they will know that it's damaging British and Northern Irish businesses, which is true. Brexit is very damaging to them. They will be told that this was not intended in the protocol, which is not true. They will think that this Article 16 may be applied if the protocol is causing the UK any damage, because the, the protocol is not supposed to cause damage to businesses, apparently. So says Boris Johnson, the BBC didn't call him out on it. But that's also not true. But people will think that. But the international powers that be in the EU and the USA, they'll know the truth. The consequences will be real. If Johnson actually follows through on these pointless threats, it will mean economic sanctions from both the EU and the US. Three quarters of our trade sanctioned. If that happens, he won't be riding high in the polls then. In fact, it will be devastating. He'd be writing his own resignation letter because if there's one thing both the EU and the US know how to do, it's apply sanctions to really hurt you. So in reality, he'll be difficult and he will threaten. Oh, he will threaten. But I think he's very unlikely to actually go through with it because he knows it's all lies. He knows it's lies. Most of his MPs know it's lies. Boris Johnson has broken rules on a quite breathtaking scale, but he's always stopped short of doing so when it would mean real consequences for him. Like I've said before, if he was really prepared to abandon the Northern Ireland Protocol, why didn't he follow through last year? Why did he back down? Why hasn't he still followed through this year? Because he didn't. He'll behave badly, he'll behave just badly enough that it plays well to his crowd, but stopping short of real consequences. The legal action that the EU are taking is slow at the moment because we're not following through on the protocol properly but we haven't completely abandoned it. But it will eventually result in sanctions. He will aim, I'm sure, to behave himself before it gets to that point. And as I've already pointed out in the past, you'd think he will be aiming to sort something out before June. Look at the G7 meeting. I can't imagine he wants to host G7 leaders when he's sticking two fingers up at three of them at least. As for the inevitable talk of a border poll, which is an obvious area of discussion when considering 100 years of Northern Ireland uh, and thinking ahead to the next 100 years, especially with the renewed tensions that, that Brexit is given, 
It was it wasn't particularly interesting to note that Boris Johnson has said that he didn't expect the need for one for a very long time. But Irish Prime Minister Michael Martin also said that having one now would be divisive and explosive. So there doesn't seem to be any great appetite for that right now from either the UK or Irish governments. But then wouldn't it be divisive and explosive whenever it happens? It's difficult to see how the situation is going to get significantly better when you have two sides being told different things. See, that's the problem with lies. It allows opposing sides to be both firmly convinced that they are right and others are wrong. Now, here's the thing. You can have a disagreement with people on matters of opinion. But where both sides accept certain facts, objective facts, then you can have an amicable debate. But where you have a fundamental disagreement on the nature of fact, oh, that's a right mess, absolute mess. And in this case, one side, maybe both, don't believe the facts. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.